Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to another episode of the SS Media podcast series. Today we have a very special guest with us, Dr. Patrick Sensberg, a prominent German politician, lawyer and law university professor. Dr. Sensberg, thank you for joining us today. Yeah, it's a pleasure being here today. Thank you. Uh, you have an impressive break, background as both a politician and a legal expert. Could you tell us a little bit about your journey and how you found yourself at the intersection of law and politics? Yeah, of course, I can do that. So um, let me point out first, um, I didn't plan to go to politics. So when I was starting my studies of law, I was always expecting to be a judge. So I thought judge is a wonderful job, and I think it still is. But when I, when I was a junior lawyer and uh, working at court, I found out to be a judge is most of the time a very lonesome job. You sit there in front, you see all the criminals, all the problems, or when treaties doesn't work out. So in the end, I thought, um, I want to do something in a team, want to do something different. And so I stayed at university, I did my PhD, I worked as a scientific assistant. And so everything was planned for a university career. And then when I was uh, working as professor, my first professorship, um, I was asked if I wanted to candidate for the German parliament because the one before me uh, was so old that he said it's enough. And then this constituency asked me if I want to candidate for the parliament. And I thought you have once in a lifetime such a chance to be a member of the parliament and see the other side of the lawmaking process. You're not just explaining law. You're not just knowing how to uh, defend people or work as a lawyer. You know when you're part of the lawmaking process as a member of parliament, you know how law is made. And that's, of course, a wonderful insight for a law professor to see the other side, how law is created. And so I decided, yes, I want to candidate um, for the German parliament. And three periods I've been in the parliament since 2021. So could you elaborate on some specific examples of how your expertise in law and politics have influenced each other? Yeah, of course. Um, so I was very lucky when I joined the federal parliament in 2009 that I was part of the law committee and also chairman of the European Law Committee, also already in the first period. So I was still working on law issues. So I really could have an insight from the point of view of a lawmaker, how acts, how laws are created, what kind of discussion process, the whole involvement of the committees, the whole parliament, but also um, the interested um, firms and, and associations, how they are all involved in a lawmaking process. And that really made myself a lot of things more clear because we as professors or also lawyers, we interpret law. We discuss how a law that exists is working and why it is working like this and how you understand an article. And now you really see how the process of designing, of making a law, of an, of an article, of a paragraph um, is working, what kind of influence a whole act has got. And now we see it from the other side and for the interpretation of law, it's really, really um, um, a big, um, yeah, let me say additional knowledge uh, that I could get so from now my point of view still as a law professor I hope I have a little bit more knowledge from the other side also and I could give that to the students I hope so in your opinion why is it important for lawyers for lawyers and legal professionals to engage in politics and vice versa I think it's not so important that professors or lawyers um, join the politics side. Um, I think it's important that we have a common understanding. Both sides should understand each other. I think it's important that professors, lawyers and other jurists understand how difficult a lawmaking process is. You can't create a balanced act in a few weeks. You, a lot of people have to be involved. So it's important, I think, that both sides understand each other. And I think also it's important for politics to understand um, and to respect the knowledge of law professors, to listen to them, to, to take the knowledge and 
put it in the legal process. So I think both sides should understand each other. Not every lawyer should be a member of parliament. I think we need some other people also in the parliament, not just jurists. So it's good uh, that we have a mixture of the society in the parliament, um, but an understanding for both sides, for both roles, I think that's important. And could you give us some more information or insight about your career as a law professor? University professor. Yeah, as I already pointed out, I started as an assistant, um, wrote my PhD, then got my first professorship in 2006 in Wiesbaden. I was already teaching as a lecturer at uh, in, in Latvia at Riga, at the Riga um, Riseva University. And then uh, after getting my first professorship in Wiesbaden, I uh, was teaching then in uh, Münster in Germany, then now in Cologne. I'm also, um, we you could call it, uh, director of the master studies at my university and um, I'm still teaching in other countries like here in Bucharest um, at the ASE which is a wonderful university uh, with a very very high reputation and uh, good students as I can say so I really love to teach also abroad and with my subjects um, my subject is European law so it's quite easy to teach in other countries for example if you have panel law national panel law or civil law it's not so easy to go to other countries to teach because each country has got their own domestic law with European law the EU countries they have the same basis of course they have the same European law and I'm also a visiting professor at the University of Vienna since 2016 where I teach and I try to take all these influences the knowledge the different approaches um, for the benefit for my students so that they can really benefit from all this experience that I got as a professor. So are you currently planning to teach in even more countries? Than... Uh, not even more. I'm concentrating uh, on here in Bucharest. Uh, we have a lot of plans. Um, yeah, publishing uh, a second book. I have one law book about European law um, here uh, published in uh, Romania by um, the Beck uh, edition. And uh, we're planning to, to publish a second book. Uh, we are planning to uh, that I have more lectures here at the ASE. So I think uh, you should decide what you do and not do too much. You should do the things that you do correct. And so still I have my guest professorship in uh, Vienna where I'm always teaching European security law. So I think aside to my university in Cologne, I think that's enough. Some uh, speeches is always possible, but uh, the concentration of uh, Bucharest and Vienna and my home university in Cologne, I think that's enough. My day also has just 24 hours. And can you also give us some more information about the books that you have uh, written so far? Yeah, I think uh, it's already something around 12 books and uh, a huge number of articles. I think that's normal for a professor who's spending all this time for academic discussions. So you should not just teach, you should also do some research also, also as a law professor and publish. Publishing means you open your ideas for a public discussion. Everybody could read it, everybody could discuss about it, also have different opinions. That's why we publish book and articles. Hopefully not everybody is of the same opinion. That is an enrichment for the academic world that authors have different opinion and you can discuss it. And so um, around about 12 books, some uh, one is in the fifth edition right now, uh, some is in the third, uh, some are in the second edition. So especially uh, the books that are for students and some um, are just published once because they are just covering a sector of issues. They are mostly um, 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 about European law, um, but some are about public law because um, I'm professor for public law and European law. So I also cover the public law, but uh, the concentration is uh, in the last years on European law. So what I publish is uh, most of the time European law. In your opinion, why is it important for lawyers and legal professionals to engage in politics and vice versa? Yeah, I think, um, as I said, it's the um, understanding that both sides understand each other, that they know about the role of the other side. So, for example, in Germany, and I think it's the same here uh, in the parliament in Romania, we have the situation that um, legal experts, um, lawyers, judges, professors, are also um, taking in concern with their opinion, um, being part of hearings in the parliament, can bring their opinions into the discussion when the lawmaking process is taking place. So to hear also the background of legal experts is important for the lawmaking process, but also 
the, the knowledge and, and the opinion of normal people um, because we don't want just medical doctors uh, in the health committee. We don't want just uh, juridical experts in the legal committee. Normal people with their normal opinion are sometimes much more important than the experts. Okay. Now, considering your expertise, what do you see as some of the key challenges in law and politics today, both in Germany and globally? I think for all of us, uh, we know that we are not living just in a peaceful world. We see the Ukraine conflict and the war um, um, started by Russia in the Ukraine since a little bit more than one year. I think uh, European Union is the most important um, a pillar of the stability of our countries, uh, even if it's uh, Romania, if it's Germany, if it's France, if it's uh, Spain. So the European Union gives us not just uh, the economic perspective. Um, it, it's giving us um, 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 peace and freedom in the whole European Union since years now. It's a factor of stability um, and safety. Of course, NATO plays a very, very important role in the integrity of the countries, but uh, European Union gives us the stability. So I think for all of us, for the governments of our country, but for us as citizens and experts, maybe in law or in other fields, it's so important to stabilize the European Union, to build up new ideas, um, to have new perspectives for the future of the European Union, because European Union brings us a stability and is our future. So so EU is, from my point of view, the most important factor for all of our countries. By the way, the European Union has something like uh, 430 million citizens. It's a huge market. Um, USA have 300 million citizens, so the EU is a much bigger market than the USA. We should work on, um, on trade agreements. We have one with Canada already. The one with the USA didn't work I mean, uh, in the end because of Donald Trump at that time. So we should work transatlantic together. And therefore, the EU is a really, really important negotiation partner um, with such a big size. Um, the USA recognizes the EU, China recognizes the EU alone. Romania alone, Germany alone, Spain alone, France alone. We don't bring that weight on the scales, but together we are an important factor um, in a globalized world. So for me, um, our countries in the European Union, that is the most uh, politic issue uh, for the next years. So from your perspective, economic-wise and judicial-wise, do you think that uh, things have progressed in a good way for the European Union in the past years? Yeah, definitely. If you just think back in steps like <coughs> 5 years, 10 years, 30 years, 50 years. We sometimes look just a few months or 2 or 3 years, then we can't see any progress. But look back 50 years how the living condition in each of our countries were how housing was, how health system was, um, how, how um, things like food, education and all these things developed in the last decades of years. Yes, I think we had a wonderful pro uh, progress in the last years and one important thing. In most of the countries, it's a little bit different uh, of the years, but in most of the countries of the European Union, we had peace since a long time. We never had such a long time of peace in uh, Europe. And that's a real benefit because we can elaborate values. We can build up values. We can step by step um, um, make our countries better without everything being destroyed by a war. So that's a real benefit that we have the European Union, that we live in peace, that people can really step by step make their lives better, um, build up families from generation to generation. By the way, before the Second World War in Europe, every generation had a war. If you go back in history, every generation, you can say every 25 to 30 years, there was a war, destruction, um, people dead, families um, divided. So now we have really the chance that for most of us, war is just a word that we never have seen in real life. And if you look at Ukraine now again, what um, um, horrible things people suffer there, everything destroyed, if you see the pictures from Bakhmut, um, um, families um, um, being divided, people killed, if you see what happens there, that we had in the rest of the world before the Second World War, um, every generation, we can just be lucky um, that we work together, that we look for more value, 
avenues for step-by-step -step, um, a better situation in our countries and for the people. So we're really uh, developing step-by-step -step, and that is, I think, from my point of view, the pers perspective that we should have working on a better European Union of our countries. It's good that we are different countries. That's a benefit. That's a variety. We, we benefit from each other, from the cultural background, from the languages, from the culture, from the paintings, uh, to the mu music. So that's a really, really benefit. But on the other side, we are one European family. So in your opinion, how do you think that the war between Russia and Ukraine could be stopped? Uh, it depends. Uh, the easiest uh, solution would be uh, Putin would recall his troops. Uh, he is the one who invaded um, in the Ukraine. It was not Ukraine troops uh, going to Russia. It were not uh, Romanian troops, German troops, French troops invading in Russia. It is the Russian army invading Ukraine. So the easiest way to stop the war is that Putin calls his troops back on his soil and uh, um, giving the country of Ukraine free. Um, but uh, as I expect, uh, Putin will not do that um, in, in short time. Um, so I think it's important to support Ukraine troops that they can push step by step uh, the Russian invaders out of Ukraine. It's hard, but uh, I think it's possible. And uh, let me say one thing, um, Ukraine uh, soldiers, fighters, and also many, many reservists, they fight very, very brave. Um, and uh, I have highest respect for them, uh, defending their country, defending their cities, their people. Um, high respect. I don't know if we all would fight so brave for our people, for our country. Highest respect from my side. As we conclude our conversation, what advice would you give to aspiring lawyers or law students who are interested in pursuing a career in politics or engaging with political in, in the political sphere? So, um, in the end, one advice is listen to your heart. Learn a lot, a no question. Uh, studying law, knowing a lot about the law process, about the lawmaking process is important. Also, law is an academic study where you should study a lot, where you should gain a lot of knowledge. But in the end, if you have your checking schemes, if you know all the books and if you know all the legal backgrounds, ask your heart if your solution is really right. So in the end, we are all doing this. A question of rule of law, a question of better acts. We're doing it for the sake of the people, for the society, to make a better society. Um, to have a, an unbalanced check of power in our societies. Also to secure the weak ones, sometimes the customers. On the other side are also the businessmen to make it possible that they run their business. So check if you have the feeling that your decision for your job, in your job or wherever is imbalanced, that you have really concerned the whole variety of the society because you're doing things like medical doctors, like others, for the benefit of the society also. Okay. That would be my advice. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Sensburg. It was a pleasure. For your answers. Thank you. Uh, and for your time and good luck in all your future endeavors. Thank, Thank you. you. We'll meet again. We will end this podcast here. Thank you for listening to us and please give us a thumbs up and a subscribe if you appreciate our content. We will see you next time. Until then, all the best. Goodbye. Bye-bye.